Today we're going to get into why we fear things and how to face those fears. We're going to try to do this as fast as possible in the most coherent way possible. And so I had a teacher recently that taught me uh, that there are five main fears. There's rejection, fear of failure, feeling like you don't have control, fear of the unknown, and physical pain. What I realized is that really there's only three main fears and there's probably only one main fear. So let's get into that. So rejection and failure are so intertwined that it's as if they're one category. They both relate to the, the community needs. You need to feel esteem, you need to feel love and all that. So if you feel like things are going well for you in that regard, Generally speaking, you won't feel rejection or failure. So we're just gonna label that as one category. So, and then there's control and physical pain. And the unknown is really something that is not a fear because you can't fear the unknown. So therefore you don't actually fear the unknown, you fear something that is deeper. You fear physical pain that's a subcategory of physical pain. You're afraid of something that might lead to physical pain. And then I realized, wait a minute, there really aren't three main categories. There's only one main category because you don't want to be rejected or fail because you're afraid that you need those things for you to survive physically. You're gonna get hurt if you don't have enough money, if you don't have a partner. Not having control, you're afraid that you're closed in, you're suffocated. Not having control, you're afraid that you're not going to be able to, you're gonna be immobile, you're not gonna be able to move and then an animal could come and eat you. So, so out of control, not having control is actually fear of animals, fear of the uh, predators. And then physical pain, um, and then the unknown, you can't know it, so therefore it's nullified. And Teal Swan is the one who really made me realize that there is no such thing as a fear of the unknown. So really the only thing you fear in life is, is physical pain. And the reason why your body responds to it is because it might lead to death. Now the question is how to overcome this. How do you get over your phobias and fears? So the answer is you gotta look into your past. If you're afraid of spiders, there's probably a time when you were a little baby, there's a spider that lands on you and everyone starts screaming, ah! And then you said to yourself, okay, so being afraid of spiders is dangerous. So go into your, uh, being afraid of, not being afraid of spiders is dangerous. Everyone's gonna scream. So I have to scream too, ah! So what you gotta do is look into your past Go back into the situation, take a deep breath, and brush the spider off of you and say, I'm fearless of spiders. You know, know it. Realize it that you've overcome your fear. You're not afraid anymore. And so it really comes down to physical pain. And there might be other situations that are similar but different, but all rooted in the same idea of what if this happens, I might be in danger. Now, let's look into my personal life. I am afraid of intimacy. I can't control it. So I don't get into relationships I want to, but my ego stops me. It's not something I can control. I say weird things, I say creepy things accidentally. I don't even know they're creepy. And then just all women end up not liking me. Um, even if they like me initially. So I just don't talk to girls because I'm just gonna screw it up anyways. My ego, has conditioned my conscious mind to be, to just say, oh, it's not gonna work out. But my ego associates intimacy with failure because it had so much, there was so much failure with my parents getting divorced. So I just associated all intimacy with problems. You know, having intimacy is a problem. It's not gonna work out, you gotta be careful. And so whenever, and I may look back and be like, oh, I never, it, it, it's just true because it never works out, but it's deeper. It's not, it's true only because the ego stopped me, only because he's scarred. So really I have to go back and to work on that, to see them in a loving relationship or see them fighting and being like, parents, I'm not gonna be like you. I'm gonna have a loving relationship. And then really know and believe that you can have a loving relationship. But to go back into your childhood, because that's the only way you're gonna overcome it. And I've done stuff like this, but there's always deeper layers. 
Now, the reason why you're afraid of failing in intimacy is because intimacy provides something you need. It provides sexual uh, relief. So, so even as a child, you can feel, you know, you feel this and no one wants to really talk about it. But that, that's why you, you uh, that's why an intimacy problem at a young age is a problem because really the child is looking for sex subconsciously. And then, and as society says, you shouldn't be craving this at such a young age. They say, wait until you're, you're, you're 15 or 20 to think about this stuff. Um, you know, that also has problems for the, for the kid. And if he's religious, he can't even think about it because it's taboo. So then he, fa he doubly faces intimacy problems. So really what the, um, the methods are going to be different for everyone. And what the child really wants is not to feel starvation. And so the reason why you get addicted to sex or get addicted to uh, intimacy, get addicted to um, these porn or something is because you're really craving intimacy. You're craving it, but your ego won't let you, right? Or the collective ego, different, you know, deeper things going on. But your ego won't let you. So therefore, you kind of just get lost in addiction. Or get lost in compensatory methods. But it comes down to starvation. You're afraid of going hungry on a biological level. But there is no obesity for people with this problem. It's just, it just looks like uh, a porn addict or something. So uh, ignore the sounds. It happens when I'm saying something important. Um, so it comes down to physical pain of starvation. So the way to overcome this is to look back into your past for anything that you have and to associate it with, with a feeling of not getting something. Uh, I may not have this. Uh, it's like a pain in the heart, pain in the chest, pain in, in the stomach or gut. Usually not. Usually it's in the chest. Pain in the gut generally happens because you have something up here in your mind space, in your head, maybe crown chakra even, and then you're forced into factoring in someone else's beliefs right um so you're inflexible so ken wilbur would probably say that no it's not the crown chakra because the crown chakra is all colors so you're tolerant of all stages so it's it's probably the pseudo crown chakra or or the vice version or you can say it's it's the um they have a problem with their with their solar plexus chakra right which one's the ab abdomen region they have a problem with all the issues that go in there. So when they feel nauseous because someone says something you don't like, that's rooted in that area of the body, that chakra, and they have to overcome it somehow uh, by looking into their past. Also, they have other needs that they're trying to have. But anyways, you see how deep this goes. So the way to overcome it, you really have to journal and to look deep and to, to explore your ego. What do you want and why? What does your super ego not allow you to think of, you know, because it's taboo? Or what if someone sees this and they, they might fire you for, for having such a strange mind? You know, so you really got to get get over that or, or try to at least maybe have a, a journal that has a lock on it, set a password. So you feel comfortable to, to talk about what's really deep inside. Because then you're not going to get to the root source of what you need to, to heal. And like I said... All the upper chakras, the foundation is the root, is the feet, is the physical pain, afraid of getting injured. And so if you can do that, find the physical association, you'll be okay. Now, does this mean that the fear has to stem from a physical thing? No. If you get injured, uh, sorry, if you have a problem uh, because someone scares you when you're a kid and you associate this with that, like you, you, uh, a clown scared you, so you associate clowns with something dangerous, right? Although that's not a, a physical pain, it's more of like the unknown, it is physical pain because you're afraid that the clown's gonna injure you because the instincts to be afraid come from the idea of an animal suddenly chasing you and hurting you. That's, uh, that's why it does come down to physical pain. You could argue, but because it goes into a subcategory, face a subcategory, 
I say no, physical pain. Realize that the clown cannot hurt you. The jaguar cannot hurt you. Nothing can hurt you. Now this doesn't mean be delusional and to train yourself to believe that you can't be injured, but most people who are in these advanced tiers, like, like Muji, let's say, he's in stage clear, when they go through pain, they just let it go. It's not, it's just a sensation. It's okay. Realize what this is. It's just a sensation and it will pass.